What is generative AI? Generative AI is a branch of artificial intelligence that focuses on creating new content such as text, images, audio or even video. Based on patterns it has learned from existing data. Unlike traditional models that classify or predict, generative models are built to produce unique outputs by understanding and reassembling data features. Popular applications include chatbots, art generation and music composition. How is it different from discriminative AI? Can, while generative AI creates new data that resembles the training examples, discriminative AI's main goal is to classify or recognize input data, not to generate it. Generative models try to capture the underlying distribution of data to produce examples, whereas discriminative models learn boundaries between categories like distinguishing cats from dogs in images. Generative models learn about both input features and their relationships, while discriminative models focus on what separates one class from another. Is logistic regression a generative model? No logistic regression is a discriminative model. It focuses on directly predicting class probabilities by learning boundaries between classes in the data rather than modeling the data distribution. Logistic regression is commonly used for binary classification tasks where it estimates the probability that an input belongs to a specific class without trying to generate new data samples. Is Nave Bayes a generative model? Yes, Nave Bayes is considered a generative model because it learns the probability of each class along with the likelihood of features within each class. This enables it to simulate or generate examples from the learned distributions even though its main use is for classification. Nave Bayes assumes independence between features which simply simplifies learning and allows it to model data in a generative way. What are the key features of generative models? Generative models are known for their ability to create new data that looks similar to the input data by learning complex patterns and structures. They capture both the features and the relationships within data, enabling them to produce realistic outputs. This flexibility makes them use for unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, and any scenario where creating synthetic data or simulating scenarios is valuable. Why is evaluating generative models difficult? Evaluating generative models is challenging because the quality of generated outputs can be subjective and context dependent. Unlike classification models where accuracy is straightforward to measure, generative models often require metrics like human judgment, content diversity and similarity to training data. Additionally, issues like realism, coherence and creativity can be hard to quantify, making evaluations complex and sometimes inconsistent. What are some examples of generative AI models? Popular generative AI models include GPT for text generation, stable diffusion for image creation and WaveNet for generating audio. These models have been trained on vast datasets to learn how to produce realistic outputs in their respective domains. Each of these models captures patterns in text, images, or logging faces can audio to create coherent high quality new examples often used in content creation and interactive applications. What is latent space in generative models? Latent space is an abstract, lower dimensional space where the model represents data in a simplified way that captures essential features. This space uh, the allows the model to understand underlying structures in the data, making it easier to generate realistic outputs by navigating within this space. 
By adjusting values within latent space, the model can create variations of the original data useful for generating diverse outputs that are still related to the input data. How does a transformer model work in generative AI? Transformers are models that analyze data sequences by applying attention mechanisms allowing them to weigh and focus on important parts of the input. This approach is powerful for tasks like text generation can where context is key. In generative AI, transformers generate text by predicting one word at a time using previous words to inform the next which enables the creation of coherent sentences and long form responses. How are LMs related to generative AI? Large language models LMS are a type of generative AI model designed to generate human like text. Trained on vast amounts of language data, they can respond to prompts, hold conversations, and even generate essays or reports. LMs use deep learning to capture grammar, facts, and context, allowing them to produce realistic, contextually relevant text, which is why again, which is why they are so popular in chatbot and content generation applications. What is the role of attention in Jenna models? Attention mechanisms help generative AI models focus on the most relevant parts of the data when creating new content. In transformers, face it can. Attention enables the model to consider specific words or parts of the input sequence that are most important to the current generation step. This approach leads to better context understanding and improves the quality of generated outputs especially in tasks like text generation where coherence is essential. What are diffusion models in generative AI and where are they used? Diffusion models are a type of generative AI that work by gradually adding noise to data and then learning to reverse this process to reconstruct the original data. They are commonly used in image generation tasks where this noise to data approach produces high quality realistic images. Popular applications include image editing, art creation and denoising in photography. How do you handle biases in generative AI models? Can. Handling biases involves training models on balanced datasets, carefully curating the data and applying debasing techniques to mitigate known biases. Regularly testing model outputs helps identify and correct any persistent biases. Additionally, transparency about the data sources and ongoing monitoring for unintended bias is crucial for ensuring fair and inclusive model behavior. How does fine tuning work in a generative model? Fine tuning a generative model involves training it on specific data after the initial general training phase. This process allows the model to adapt to a particular style, domain or task. For instance, face phase that can an image model fine tuned on medical images will be better at generating or analyzing medical images. Fine tuning is a lighter. Faster, faster process compared to training from scratch and helps tailor the model's outputs to specific needs. What an applicant, what are the common metrics for evaluating text generation models? Common metrics include BLEU and RAUGE, which compare generated text to reference answers for similarity. F1 score and accuracy are also used when the focus is on precision and relevance. Human evaluation remains important for assessing coherence, fluency and overall quality as automated metrics don't fully capture the nuances of human language quality.
what is the applicant can what is the importance of temperature and top k sampling in text generation temperature controls the creativity of the model's output with lower values making it more predictable and higher values introducing more variety a top k sampling limits choices to the top most likely words at each step helping to avoid unexpected or off topic words while still allowing some diversity in responses together they balance between coherence and the creativity in generated text how can how can generative ai used in creative fields like art and music generative ai can create unique visual art music compositions and even poetry by learning patterns and styles from large data sets artists and musicians can use these models to generate new ideas remix styles or create backgrounds and motifs enhancing speeding up the creative process ai generated can content can also serve as inspiration or a base for further human creativity what are the ethical concerns associated with generative ai generative ai can create misinformation plagiarize existing works and reinforce biases found in its training data it also raises privacy concerns if sensitive data is used to train models the ease of generating content that resembles real information or art challenges issues of authenticity copyright and accountability making it essential to use generative ai responsibly how do generative models handle complex high dimensional data can generative models break down complex data into simpler abstract forms in latent space capturing the main features without needing every detail this allows them to understand high high dimensional data like images or sound and generate new examples techniques like deep learning and attention help manage the complexity can focusing on the most relevant information within the data what is prompt engineering in generative ai and why is it important a prompt engineering is the process of crafting specific prompts to guide a generative model toward producing better or more accurate outputs it's a, it's important because the model's response depends heavily on the prompt and well designed prompts can improve relevance creativity and clarity prompt engineering helps control output quality and makes ai more useful in practical applications on hugging and how can generative ai models be made to produce safer less biased outputs using balanced and diverse data sets applying bias detection techniques and regularly monitoring outputs help make generative models safer fine tuning on curated data and filtering inappropriate responses also reduce harmful content ethical guidelines and user feedback are important for keeping models responsible and responsive to diverse needs What are some challenges of using generative AI in real world applications? The generative AI can produce unreliable or biased content, lacks full human judgment and can be hard to control in real world settings. It requires careful evaluation, significant computing power and ongoing monitoring to ensure quality. In regulated industries like healthcare and finance, using generative models also involves ethical, legal and operational considerations. hugging face face again what's the difference between a short and few short learning in generative models zero short learning refers to generating responses for tasks the model hasn't seen before without any examples few short learning involves giving the model a few examples can helping it adapt better to specific tasks few short learning often improves accuracy especially for niche topics while zero short is useful when no examples are available
that can how is generative ai applying healthcare finance or customer service in healthcare generative ai can can help with patient record summaries treatment suggestions and medical research in finance it generates reports analyzes trends and automates responses to market questions in customer service it can answer faqs assist with product queries and personalize responses making interactions faster and more accessible how does how does generative ai impact content creation and what are some challenges generative ai speeds up content creation by drafting cults creating images or generating ideas helping creators produce more content in less time however challenges include ensuring originality preventing plagiarism and managing ai's potential biases quality control and human review remain essential to avoid producing inaccurate or inappropriate content what are some practical limitations of generative ai models generative models can be resource intensive requiring significant computing power and data for training they may also produce inaccurate or biased content and their results can be unpredictable additionally they may struggle with complex logic long term context or highly specialized tasks limiting their use in critical or highly regulated industries